Hello everyone, welcome. It's time to craft with Spellbinders November Club Kits. And I have three of them on my desk here. I'm going to show you what they look like before we get into our card projects. I have the clear stamp and die of the month, first of all. This one is called Around the Holidays. The sets this month really remind me of the sets that came out last April, where they have the, the wavy line to them. But this set is really fun. It's all about the winter holidays. You can buy this stamp set with the coordinating dies now if you want, or you can buy it just as the stamp set. But these dies cut out the border under or above the snowflakes and the presents and the string of lights. And then it cuts out the little presents. All of these sets really coordinate beautifully together. I don't have the Glimmer of the Month Club here. But I have the small die of the month as well as the large die of the month, and these are all interchangeable. So let me show you the small die of the month next. It's called Stitched Curved Border and Ornaments, and this is a fun stitching die set. You get three different Christmas tree ornaments, as well as the attachment to them that you can glue on the top of them, and then a string. I like that they have the string. And then this wavy die cuts out the holes so that you can stitch. And it also has the dies around it. If you want to cut this out completely, you can, or just one edge of it. So a really fun set. And then the large die of the month is just gorgeous. This one is called Christmas Foliage Strip and Borders. And this is a lot like the one from last April, where it has all of these borders and they mix and match as well from the set from last April. But this one has a Christmas flare or a wintertime flare to it. So this bottom border cuts out some beautiful Christmas foliage. And then it has the flowers that you can cut out separately and layer on top of them. So it's a lot of fun. All of my cards today are going to be the same design, but just using these three different products. So for card number one, I pulled out a piece of poppy red cardstock. I love this red. It's such a bright, happy red. And I'm going to stamp out the presents. I pulled out my regular sized Misty to do this because the stamp is going to go off the edge and I just want a lot of room to figure out where to put this stamp. I'll pick it up with the door of the Misty and then I'm going to stamp this with some black ink. I'll stamp this up a few times just to get a nice dark impression. And then I'm going to stamp it one more time, just onto a piece of white cardstock. I'll use the same black ink to do this because it is a Copic friendly ink. I'm just using my dot liner to temporarily tack this in place. But I want to stamp out all of the presents so that I can color them in and cut them all out with the coordinating dies. So I'm going to do some very fast and easy Copic coloring. I'll speed this up for the sake of time. But my color palette is just going to be some warm reds and pinks and greens. I really like how these presents are drawn. It's just kind of cute and sketchy. And they were very easy to color in. The hardest part was picking out my color palette. I want to add tons of colors on it, but I wanted to keep it kind of simple this time. I'm using two different red Copic markers, two pinks and two greens, just to add a little bit of shading to the presents. But there's not a lot you have to do because they are drawn and detailed so well. But I'm just interchanging these three colors. The paper that I'm using is Nina Solar White, 110 pound cardstock. 
I usually like to use the 80 pound, but I'm out of that. But I do have a lot of the 110 pound. I use that for my card bases. Okay, now that these are all colored in, I'm going to cut each one of these out. And I'm also going to cut out my red panel with the curved die. I just got to match these up to the presents. And then I will be taping them down with a little bit of the craft tape. I went ahead and added some white details with a gel pen, but I didn't like how that looked, so I am going to be covering those up. I stamped out the sentiment just under the curve. It says Merry Christmas. And then I, I'm going to pop up this red panel with some foam pieces. And now for the fun part. I'm going to start gluing down all of these little Christmas presents. I'll glue down a stack of them at the bottom. And then I'm going to completely cover out, up my stamped image on the red cardstock with these presents. But I like the look of them on the red cardstock, especially because they have the white border around them. I added a few pink gems, and here is the finished card. Now on to card number two. It's going to be the same design, but I'm going to use the small die of the month, and I'm going to do a little bit of stitching. I love stitching on paper, so I'm always excited when Spellbinders comes out with these stitching dies. So I'll line this up. This is a piece of Rainforest cardstock and I'll tape this into place. I'm going to cut out the bottom edge of this. I situated the die so that these circles were completely on the cardstock and not running off the edge. <laughs> so here it is all cut out. I'm just going to snip the bottom of this edge off here. But you don't even have to stitch them if you don't want. I've seen a few card examples where they just added the Christmas bulb toppers to them and made, made them look like little Christmas bulbs and that was just adorable. But I like to do some stitching. I have some variegated red and pink um, floss and this is three pieces of the floss. I just kind of pull it apart. It seems to be the perfect amount so that your stitches don't get too tight. And I'm not going to show you the whole stitching. It did take me a while. I'll just show you a few. I taped it in place with some more of the craft tape. And I just leave it like that. I know a lot of people tie knots, but I just leave it with the tape on there to hold it in place. And I love the red, the bright red floss on this green cardstock. And this is so relaxing too, just sitting and stitching on these cards. Okay, here it is all done. I also cut out one of the red Christmas bulbs from some poppy red cardstock. I'm going to glue it onto a piece of rainforest cardstock. I'm going to stamp the sentiment this time that says Noel. And I'm using a piece of oatmeal cookie cardstock to do this. I did check my alignment first before I stamped it with the Christmas bulb. That Christmas bulb will tuck just perfectly on top of the sentiment. I'm going to glue the Christmas bulb down flat along with the the paper string. I like how narrow that string is, or the, the cutout. <laughs> and then again, I'm going to pop up the top portion of this card with more of the foam pieces. For a touch of sparkle, I'm going to pull out the red gems and put a small red gem on each of the circles, the stitched circles, and around the card panel. And here's the finished card. 
I also put a green gem on the larger Christmas bulb. Now for card number three, same design again, but I'm using the large die of the month. I use that wavy die to cut out my pink, dark pink panel. And I'm going to stamp my sentiment on the top portion of the card this time. I'm going to stamp out the sentiment that says, a gift for you. You get so many cute border dies in this set. I just love it. So I do end up stamping this out a few times to get it nice and dark. Then I can pull this out and get started on the floral element. So again, I'm popping this panel up. The floral die, this piece right here, I cut out with brushed silver cardstock. And I'm going to glue this down flat just under the dark pink cardstock. I cut out all of the coordinating poinsettias and pine boughs off camera. And next I'm going to layer these pieces on top, but it just looks elegant just like that. So let's trim off the overhang. And then start layering up these flowers. And this is such a fun part. It just adds a wow factor to this card. These pine boughs I cut out with some specialty sparkle cardstock from Spellbinders. It's hard to catch on camera, but they have a sparkle to them. And then I use the same pink cardstock, dark pink cardstock, or the poinsettias. And you can make this as elaborate or as simple as you'd like, and it'll just look beautiful. I'm going to glue on the little berries with more of the sparkle cardstock. And then for the smaller flowers, I'm, I'm using pink cardstock as well as the sparkle cardstock. And then I'm going to bring in some more of the pink gems. But let's trim off this pine bough here. And I'm going to use my all-in-one tool to do this. I'll put one in the centers of all of the flowers. I love the different sizes of these gems. And then I'm going to put some around the sentiment. Spellbinders really has some lovely gems in their store. And I'm almost out of the pink. But I think even over the pink, my favorite would be the gold. And I'm out of those. So I need to purchase some more of those. Let's attach this to a top folding white card base again. And that's all there is for card number three. I'm sure I'll be making up some slimline cards with these dies. But for this video, I just wanted to create some A2 sized cards. I hope this gave you some fun inspiration and ideas of what you can do with your November club kits from Spellbinders. I'll have all of the products listed below. Thanks so much for spending some of your time with me today. I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye.